Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Brantford, Connecticut, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back day for me. Me and uh, Miss Mayor, we're in uh, sunny California. I tell you, California, there's such an illusion of everything's perfect. That's we're what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that you, you've you both come back different. Mayor, I can tell she's different. <laughs> I'm not. I'm the same. <laughs> she's different. <laughs> they, put us up a, they put us up in a really nice hotel, and then mm-hmm. they own uh, the manager of Rich Roll owns this incredible. Well, first, you got to say you went out there. To be interviewed we went, for the Rich Roll podcast. Yeah. So this is the second time I've been on Rich Roll. And it's he's such a great guy. And the podcast is so great and transformational. You love just, him. I love him. I love him. It's like, <laughs> okay. uh, he's better at interviewing people than I am. He's okay. he's better looking. He's taller and better looking. He has a full big head of hair. He's got a better beard than me. His glasses are cooler than mine. Did you get any beard <laughs> uh, pointers from him? Weird pointers? Beard. beard. Oh, beard pointers. Oh, beard. I didn't I didn't ask him for beard pointers, but I should have. Yeah. But um, no, we had a great time. He's just a great person. And um, he's got a really sweet staff that works with him. And his manager was just in Vrindavan. Yeah. And his, his manager is wonderful. And his manager owns this incredible vegan gluten free restaurant that we went to called the Joy Cafe. Uh-huh. And we went there and uh, and then we went to. uh. Now, hold it. What about the interview itself? How did that go? The interview itself, you know what? If you want, I, I don't really get nervous so much, you know, being on stage for years. But I will say I was just a little nervous only because <laughs> the caliber of humans that he has as guests. <laughs> okay. I was like, OK, this guy's a scientist. This guy's a deep philosopher. This guy's a, and I was just like. Uh, this guy's, you know, a but super you're athlete. Author. You're a published author now, Rogan. You know what? I'm just like, I'm a, I'm a nobody. <laughs> what is, what? <laughs> I've got nothing to tell these people. <laughs> but um, you know what I did? I woke up early. I woke up early and and uh, sat up in bed and I prayed to our disciplic succession. Oh, one after the other? One after the other. That... You know, I don't have much to say and I'm not so smart and I'm not so learned and, I'm, and I don't I don't have that much depth but in my somehow realization. Krishna has given you a platform. Yeah. So I said, please, you know, Krishna has given me this platform to speak to whatever half a million people, whoever he reaches. Um, please s- s- say something that will attract people to the holy name. You want um, to be an instrument. Yeah. Yeah. And it was in, in that type of humility. I went into it and I, and I started with how Vaishnavs and you recommended this as well, but I, I started the interview with how Vaishnavs start any type of um, satsang is you appreciate the people you're with. And mm-hmm. I agree. I have a great appreciation for everything Rich does. And so um, that, that that shifts everything. It's not just like, it's not a debate. It's not it's just like you just want to appreciate and get to know each other. 
um, and, and, and share your realizations. And he immediately went right to our podcast and was saying, oh, my God, you guys do this every day. I don't know how you pull this off. He said that um, during the interview. Yeah. No, so it's, it's a good plug. Good plug. Oh, yeah. We talked about the podcast for a while. I even mentioned uh, Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Recovery Podcast. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be very relevant for his listeners. Yeah, I told. I don't think he understood that we have a whole separate uh, re recovery parallel recovery group. Did going he understand on with you, the podcast? He didn't understand it before you spoke to him, or even after. I don't think he knew about it. He didn't know about it. Okay. Yeah, he didn't know about it. But yeah, it's very impressive what what they've got going on. I felt really honored to be on it, and uh, yeah, Talked and. About the and we talked about the book a lot, too. And today I'm in Connecticut, and we're about to do our first show tonight in Hamden, Connecticut. We have four shows coming up. I'm trying my best to do um, as much uh, Wisdom of the Sages shelter. as I can on the road. Your band Shelter. That's what my band Shelter. We play okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, I just posted the things that I'm doing in order. And it's really exciting. The book, the, just to support the book, I think. And then we have Monday and Tuesday off, and then Wednesday we fly to uh, Southern California, and we do okay. more book promotion, kirtans yeah. or band stuff, etc. We've got a different kind of week going on next week because you'll be really busy, but we've lined some things up. I think we're doing a sh you're you're doing the show on Tuesday with us, right? Yeah, and then we'll have a uh, Krishna Kshetra Swami, oh, brilliant scholar. Oh, this is great. Seems like you've just gone out and replaced me. This is great. Right. Yeah, oh, very, very nice. And then, nice. And then uh, that's Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday we have the spiritual scientist. Okay, this is going to be better. This is going to be better. <laughs> They're not going to want me back. Well, and then we may we're reaching out to one or two others too. We want to fill in that space because you, you're 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 disappearing on us, Ragnar. Yeah, I'm sorry. Late nights and all that. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's no, hard. It's hard. And, and the band thing is hard. And the California time difference is even harder. I, I'm just so, glad that we're not going to just miss out for like a whole Me week. too. I'm glad that wasn't the, we didn't go there. That's yeah. good. Uh, Mara, do you have any announcements, Miss Miss Mara? Did you have a good time in California? She's, she oh, was in Malibu. She, you see, a little too great. And she's different. I can, I mm. feel. <laughs> yeah. It was a great time. Um, we have Cult of Cain Asana class tomorrow Our uh, for our Patreon members at 1030 a.m. And we're keeping this show time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, um, tomorrow and also on Saturday while Rog was on the road. Oh, 3 o'clock on Saturday, too. All right. Yeah, does mm -hmm. that work for you, Kostub? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we have uh, back to recovery group meetings tomorrow at 12.30 and 1 Eastern time. Okay, so then we, we're good through Saturday, then Sunday off. Yeah. And I'll see if I can line up some for Monday. But then okay. definitely we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday lined up. Okay, yeah. and that'll be back at 7 a.m. time. Is that right? Yeah, those will all be at 7 a.m., yeah. And New Yorkers come down to Generation Records at 1 o'clock in the afternoon for... Oh, yeah. Well, that's in the village, right? That's in the in the in in Greenwich Village, yeah. Generation mm -hmm. Records. We're doing an in-store Q&A. You know, before we get into the show today, uh, I want to just... My, my host here is one of our regular Zoomers, David Hausworth. But he has a pretty oh, yeah. interesting story. David, why don't you come on down here? David's hosting me here. related to the Ritual podcast, too, right? Very much. Very much. David, take the mic. Well, you know, what's your uh, origin story here? Where, where, how, did yeah. you, how did you end up here listening to Wisdom of the Sages regular, regularly? And I know your sister's on the show right now. Um, tell us a little bit about your story, please. Yeah. So my origin story starts with my sister, Heather. Heather Stan, who's a Zoomer currently. Oh, yeah. um, while I was going through my active recovery, um, which is part of the Bhakti Recovery part of the Bhakti Recovery Podcast. Um, Rich Roll was very influential in that. And the fact that it made me know that it was okay to be a dentican, that it was okay to need to be recovering, that um, alcoholism, substance abuse does not define who we are as individuals. It's our spirit soul that defines us as individuals. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to be emotional currently. <clears throat> no emotions. Absolutely no <laughs> emotions. Not on the extent it can. So within that, um, Shelter was another band that, or a band that influenced me a lot growing up as a kid. 
to the point that I played air guitar to those first Shelter albums. Who didn't? You know, me in a wiffle ball bat thinking I was Paramonda, you know? <laughs> um, I was not at all in any way, shape, or form, but I won't squirrel on that part of it. Um, so my sister Heather brought to me Rich Roll's podcast with Roganoff and said, listen to this podcast. And in that in that podcast, he made two statements that were very profound to me. It, <laughs> we are all dented cans and we are all looking for a God-shaped hole to fill. Um, and that's all it took. From there, I started listening to the podcast and I've been a Zoomer ever since. I don't think I've missed more than four shows. Um, and now I go back and I listen to spiritual thought process. I So I listen, I zoom in in the morning, then I listen to four hours of back catalogs. Then I listen to Shelter. Then I listen to <laughs> the Martavad. Then I listen to the Ramadan. And then I just keep listening to, because what we put into our ears is what's going into our brains and what's going to go into our hearts and move us forward. Yeah. And that's what it is. And it's all of you on this podcast, every single person who's looking back at me and Raganoff right now has changed my life and has affected my life. All of you have saved mm -hmm. me from myself. So thank you for everything everybody does every day. That is beautiful. Thank you, David. Yeah, that was beautiful. All right, Paul. Isn't it great to just meet the Zoomers sometimes? It is. Thanks, you know, it, it, it just um, reinforces the idea that Somehow we started doing this thing every single day, you know, but every day, once a week is something, but when you do something every day, it, it, it works its way into your life um, in such a way that it can really be transformative. That's, that's the power. I brought that point up yesterday. We do this every day because that's what the Bhagavad Gita tells us to do. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen to other people. I've seen it happen to myself. You get a set of, you get a set of Bhagavatams, mm -hmm. but you never crack them open. They just become sort of open. like a, a painting on the wall. Yeah, and not just crack them open, but make them daily. Daily, it's a daily read, and because of it, it will t start to take you on a ride of self discovery, and it won't give you what you need. It, it won't give you what you want. It'll give you what you need, mm. and that's beautiful and scary and wonderful. And the Bhagavatam has been like a, um, in my own life, it's been like someone throws me a, a lifesaver. I'm out at sea and throw, someone throws me one of those lifesavers and a rope and, and pulls me in from stormy seas. So I'm grateful as well. And community is everything. And somehow without even, I don't even think we had the foresight, Kostuba, but it's the community that... Uh, is really powerful with wisdom of the sages. We have a very, very good yes. supportive community. Yeah. Huh. It's good to hear the story. Right, you know, if people yeah, don't that's... share those stories. You don't know those stories. It's encouraging. Very encouraging. Yeah. I'm excited that, uh, the, that the Bhakti recovery, uh, group and podcast was mentioned on the ritual podcast. Yeah. That's, that's a real good. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get her on it. That would be great. If Jiva gets yeah. on. It's a whole nother thing. Yeah. All right. You want to go into uh, back to the Bhagavatam, sir? I do. And then I'll go and get my stage dive cloth clothing on after that. <laughs> special clothing. You got like special, special armor that you special <laughs> football helmet. I should get like a gigantic rubber bubble that I get inside and they just <laughs> roll me off stage. Like uh, uh, you're 58 year old. You're 58 years old right now. So you got to go in a bubble. What if you just went out there like in a football uniform? With yeah, the that's a way to do it too. <laughs> With a mouth guard. <laughs> okay. Are we on chapter seven? No, anyway. Yes. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayvan rotamam devim saraswatim vyasam litojayam madiriyat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta prayesh for Badre su nicham bagavat sevaya bagavati utama sloke bhakti rabavati naishtiki by regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is 
praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyana Tamarandasya Gyana Anjana Salakaya Chaksuru Unmiladham Dhyena Tasmai Shri Gurudeva Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Yeah. Reading from the Shuma Bhagavatam, Canto 7. Chapter... Seven. Seven. Text Which number. Text are I'm a little lost on the text. Or text number 25, but let's let's just do a bit of a recap here, huh? Yeah, recap it, please. A bit of a recap. So we have this fascinating conversation we're zooming in on here, right? It's all children, all kids. Headed up by by Prahlad, who's I believe five years old at the time. Hmm. But he's not your average five year old. Nope. He's been trained, like right? he's 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 already demonstrated incredible courage, speaking truth to power. He's already demonstrated a kind of like spiritual insight that makes that for him it's like he, he can't it's almost like they're trying to corrupt him. They're trying mm -hmm. to bring his consciousness down. You know, the, the, his teachers, his his father, they've been trying to bring him into this worldly us them uh, kind of friends enemy kind of type of thinking. And he's just like, I'm sorry, I do not relate to that. I cannot relate relate. To, I will not relate to that. And um, and it's gotten hot. You know, it's it's created some issues, even to the point where they tried to kill him. <laughs> but yeah, they, a little bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah, but um, they they tried in different ways, and somehow mystically they couldn't pull it off. And then the teachers are kind of like, you know what? Let's it's probably just a phase. Let's yeah. let's just uh, let's keep working on him. Mm. So meanwhile, what they weren't counting on is he's about to kind of like influence all the rest of the kids. So now he's speaking to his his five year old classmates. And he's going to give them spiritual teachings that go from like the conventional, you know, to, to people that are unfamiliar with the whole, with Vedanta, right? With the ancient texts of these ancient texts in India, this might be unfamiliar, but to people that are somewhat familiar, familiar with that, he's starting in the conventional way. It's going to start with understanding that we're not the body that we are the spark of spiritual energy mm. that is um, known by its primary quality that it is conscious, right? It, it is aware. I am that awareness within the body. He's going to go from that all the way up to the most esoteric, deeply spiritual, beautiful, devotional kind of teachings. Um, but right now we're kind of at the beginning and, and he's starting, you know, this is, this is kind of called Jnana Yoga, right? Um, it's an application of jnana, which means knowledge, where you begin to try to discern who am I, hmm. right? Just in a very practical way that a lot of people may never, even people, right, like the religious traditions, a lot of the religion, like at least the way that I think you and I learned them, we were never kind of like in all of our catechism. And I don't think anyone ever said like, who am I? You know, it's like, sure. I, let's try to experience that. Let's try to feel that. I had no clue what the soul was. I thought the soul was sort of like a ghost-like thing <laughs> that looked just like me but was invisible <laughs> and was not bound by time and space. But uh -huh. it was, you know, it was, it, it comes after I die. There's no soul uh -huh. in the body. Right. Uh, I, I didn't quite get it. It was never quite explained to me. I, I, I didn't. I definitely didn't understand the concept of a personal God. I, I did. I understood a personal God, but not that God had a particular form or a face. I, I pictured right. a faceless being in a chair, okay. like some type of throne. Well, I think there are biblical verses that are that might lead one to that kind of thinking. Although I, you know. I think I, I just fabricated it. I don't think I was no, no, no. It's, it's, I, it's I wasn't a somewhere. biblical uh, no, no, theologian. No, no, no. Like it does talk about it being the king, the throne. These things are mentioned. Mm. You um, know, I also want to de demythifies this also because sometimes when you hear these stories, okay, a five year old boy was teaching a bunch of five year old boys. Guess what? There are some pretty impressive five year old boys. <laughs> okay, you know, if you just such a long time ago. 
Yeah, well, not only that, you see here. Well, first of all, there's five year old boys now who are prodigies or or girls who are prodigies in music, in art, in dance, in singing and in, in mathematics, in chess. Unbelievable stuff. Well, uh, yeah. I don't want to say, but there's also and, and and just because they are, they almost seem like what? Who the hell is this kid? Um, so you might even think, well, maybe there's some magical being, not necessarily, they could be completely materialistic. They just might have fine tuned some particular material skill like mathematics or, you know, drumming or something or piano. But we've also seen these spiritual prodigies in, in, in at least in the uh, Indian tradition, you hear about this all the time, Prabhupada's, uh, guru, was it you know, a four-year-old master of the Bhagavad Gita? Hmm. Four-year-old? Yeah. You know, what were you doing at four years old? I wasn't doing that. I was like pulling the arms off my G.I. Joes. That's what I was doing, like, like burning things. When I, I wasn't studying the Bhagavad Gita. Then right. there was um, Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya, who changed the face of India, he took sannyas at eight years old. That means he told his mother, I'm giving up the world for for God. I won't see you again. I won't see you again. And, I, <laughs> and he wandered with thousands of disciples to and, and, and left temples. There's still temples you can go to that he started yeah. in his childhood. So this is not like a, a new thing in Indian yogis and yogic sure. masters. True. Um, so so sometimes when we read these stories, it can be like, oh, this is a very interesting fantasy. They're also realities also. Well, you know, Raghunath, I, I was thinking um, you, you mentioned demythify. And it's a fact that, you know, our tendency is to kind of shrink existence down into our experience kind of bubble yeah. and think that anything, if it doesn't fit within what I've experienced in this life, then it, does, it is irrational or unrealistic or mythical or whatever. But but occasionally we see, we get glimpses of what the possibilities are that we're just not... I always, th I always just think one great example is this uh, little film clip that I saw of this autistic person. He had some kind of, some kind of special autism. I, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but they would take him and fly him over Manhattan in an airplane, right? Mm. Just like one flight over. Yeah. And then he would sit in, on a huge stretch of paper in incredible detail, draw like every building in Manhattan in, in scale. Like, right? Mm. Like somehow his memory was able to pick all of that up. And, and, and not only that, even kind of um, compose that picture in his head so that he could come and reproduce it almost like a photograph. Mm. You know, thousands of buildings. You yeah. know, the, the, their placement, their size, you know, like, so what does that indicate about the potential of a human being? And just because we don't see people doing that very much now doesn't mean that there weren't times where people were tapping into their potential in very different ways than we are now. Well, if you if, if you've ever, ever studied any cultural art, music, martial arts, um, dance, and then you think like, wow, imagine if I never studied jujitsu, I would never know it. But because of it, I have some like skill in my pocket, so to speak. Or if you studied dance, you could whip out and start dancing. If you did 10 years of ballet or something, you never know your your potential with your body and with your mind and with your movement, etc. cetera. Um, imagine these people who just really refined some facet of their intelligence. It doesn't go away when you die. That stays in your subtle. So when we see a five-year-old who has an incredible intelligence or incredible spiritual acumen, or they have some, you know, there was a, a kid who could play the tablas incredibly at age five, and the, they brought masters to hear him, and they were like, we can't understand how this boy knows these tabla beats at his age. They're very advanced tabla beats. So it's it, it seems almost freakish. But no, it, 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 you don't forget that stuff. You pick up where you last left off. It stays in your subtle body, and then it manifests again in this life. And the same is true with your spiritual acumen. You pick up where you last left off. And we've met people, and I'm sure people out there have met people who 
almost like are spiritually dull. You try to explain something to them and they're like, no, no way. No, they just can't hear it. And then there's some people from a young age are so attracted and so almost like thoughtful, deep, um, you know, deeply rooted and connected and and kind. It's as if they've been practicing some type of spiritual path for lifetimes and they may be completely different than their family. They might not even grow up, grew up in a family that is a very spiritual or thoughtful family. They might be like the the black sheep of the family. This person is very gentle and, and thoughtful like Prahlad was. Like Prahlad, yeah. And then what happens is by that ability or by that, whatever you, whatever you shine in, you become an influencer. And whether it's, it can be whether you shine it, you could be in some corrupt behavior as well. You could influence people in a horrible way, but in your spiritual life, if you really shine, then all of a sudden people see, Oh, I want to be like that. Hmm. And this is where Prahlad is at right now. He's right. influencing. He's the, he's one of the early influencers. Okay. So, and, and the, where he's starting with his teachings here is, is this kind of t t almost typical kind of Gyanic path where he's saying, and, and this is what we read last, uh, that was text 20, text 24. He said sober and expert persons. Okay. Sober means here people that aren't, oh, we, we talked about it being drunk on the world, right? I'm not, right. You know, I, I can, I can, uh, I, I'm not um, thrown off. You know, I can think clear. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not overly influenced by different aspects of conditioning in whatever form they may come. They're not, they're not affecting my clarity of thought. I'm sober. So sober persons who are experts should reach for the spirit's soul, should search for the spirit's soul with minds purified through analytic study. That's good. Um, verse in terms of the soul's connection with and distinction from all things that undergo creation, maintenance, and destruction. So th this is key here, right? This is a very fundamental kind of teaching of Vedanta, fundamental Gyanic kind of approach that there's, we're living in a world and living in a body that's made up of matter, a type of energy that it, it's characterized by its constant constantly being in flux it's constantly in the cycle of creation maintenance and ultimately destruction and then around again and again and again but there's someone that observes that someone that observes the world around us going through those changes someone that observes the their own body going through those changes that's the me that i need to find i need to identify that and therefore i begin to break it down right am i this hand no right because I'm observing the hand and so on. It's, it's just, it's an analytical kind of approach to understanding who am I on a spiritual level. So that brings us to today's uh, text, text number 25. Okay. Intelligence can be perceived in three states of activity, wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. The person who perceives these three is to be considered the original master, the ruler, the supreme personality of Godhead. Okay, you, you know, and sometimes these Bhagavatam verses they um, they speak about the Atma and the. Par Let's see what this what it says here in the Sanskrit here, saying the Purusha Para. So it's saying there's a person inside, a Purusha, but here it says Purusha Para. So that means not just the soul, but we say there's two souls within the body, right? The super soul, the para purusha. Yeah, the higher, the supreme, yeah. the super soul. So, it's, so this verse, it, it's it's it seems to be indicating that within this body, there's us, the knower. We go through three different states of awareness. It's kind of like our our awareness. Like if we're this spark of spirit, that's manifesting this awareness. I feel, I experience, I witness, I observe, and right. so on that that awareness is being filtered through three different states of, of being. Um, and those beings are quote, those states of being are called wakefulness, dreaming and deep sleep. And we all know those, right? We've all been through them. We all know what it's like to be awake. We're probably okay. awake right now. Most of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, um, and we all know what it's like to dream. Sometimes even when we're dreaming, we're no, we know we're dreaming, which is weird, right? Yeah, that's weird. I've had that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm dreaming this. 
and and deep <laughs> sleep is is this um state where the awareness is kind of shut down and and we're kind of like it's almost like um like when when you some like when you turn off your computer but the battery is still there Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and so the bat. So it's like if you if you close your computer and you, and you open it up, uh, five hours later, the 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 clock is still right on time, because the battery was there all along, but it wasn't it it, it wasn't um, processing any information. Okay, that's a good analogy, sir. Like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep that right. one. Close okay. the computer; it's still running, yeah. and they open the it up. Oh, what there. the hell happened? Yeah, yeah, so there's there's no processing of information in that state, but the but the awareness is kind of still there in the latent state. And we know deep sleep. You know how we know deep sleep? Because when we wake up, we feel this refreshing, like we feel, whoa, I was just in deep sleep. <laughs> you know, it's like right. I was so I was yeah. so zonked out. I wasn't even dreaming. I was just yeah. gone. Right. Yeah. So so this is something that these these yogis and these gyanis, they um they would think about. They they didn't like we grew up and we're just like, yeah, whatever I was dreaming or I wasn't or whatever. They were like, what, what was that world that I was in? Hmm. And, and what can it tell me about myself? <laughs> you know, they were like trying to analyze all these things. So, so this is where he's starting. He's saying that our intelligence or our awareness is passing through three different states and it's colored by, it's affected by those states. Just like, you know, we're in, we get in different states according to, our awareness gets affected by external filters, right? Like for this in a, in a million different ways. Like if you put me in a really noisy place, my awareness is changed by that. And if you put me in a silent place, my awareness is changed by that. And I, and I witness both of those states that my own thoughts go through. And so similarly, these are fundamental states, right? Wakefulness, dreaming, deep sleep. We're passing through these states. The person who perceives these three is to be considered the original master. And he's saying that this is a key thing, right? That we're saying that there's each one of us is this individual spark of energy with our own individual consciousness, our own individual experience of our own bodies and of the world that we share. I don't know what's going on in Raghunath's body right now. I, like, I don't know if you're hungry. No, because my awareness is not within your body. You don't know if I'm hungry. Uh, you know if you're hungry, and I know if I'm hungry because our awareness is is situated here within the body. But the, we're saying that there's a there's another soul, and this soul they use different analogies, right? Like sometimes they say like this: if you have like a thousand pots of water on the ground, and and the sun is in the sky, then the sun is appearing in every one of those pots, the yeah. same one sun is appearing in all those parts. So the, 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 this paramatma, this, this, it's ultimately a manifestation of, of God is present within everyone's body. So I don't know if Raghunath's hungry. I know if I'm hungry, but paramatma knows whether I'm hungry, whether you're hungry, whether everyone's, cause he's situated in everybody. And so this verse is talking about that. You want to read the commentary? This some cool yeah, stuff. Yes, I do. Uh, this is commentary of, I lost my spot. 25? Uh, 25, yes. Okay. Without intelligence, one cannot understand the direct activities of the senses, nor can he understand dreaming or the cessation of all gross and subtle activities. Okay. The seer and controller is the supreme personality of Godhead, the supreme soul, by whose direction the individual soul can understand when he is awake, when he is sleeping and when he is completely in trance. So, so that's so. The, the, there's two of us, but one is an Ishvara. One is like the controller. So, like sometimes I can't sleep even though I want to, right? Mm. Sometimes I wake up. What is it that woke me up? It's saying that our ability to perceive these different states of awareness is facilitated by that supreme soul within everyone. That there's this, there's this all pervasive being within the body of every li living being there to um in a sense regulate the different experiences that they have including these three different states of, of wakefulness um this they're, they're going to quote the bhagavad-gita there's a famous verse in the gita yeah. 15 15 
if when you if you're looking for a new password for your for, phone should we check in with uh karuna i bet she knows this one karuna knows this one no karuna 1515 where is she is she on the show yeah she was is she gone no, are she you left. unmuting are you unmuting her are you i don't fine? i can't find her okay all right i'm gonna do a karuna i'm sorry you had your chance in the sun <laughs> <laughs> The Lord says, Sarvasya chaham hridi sani visto matha smriti gyanam apoanam cha. I'm seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. The living entities are completely absorbed in three states of wakefulness, dreaming and deep sleep through their intelligence. This intelligence is supplied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead who accompanies the individual soul as a friend. Srila Madhvacharya, that's one of the great previous masters, says that the living entity is sometimes described as sattva buddhi, when his intelligence acts directly to perceive pains and pleasures above activities. Is that pure intelligence. When his intelligence acts directly to perceive pains and pleasures above activities. Above activities. Srila Madhvacharya says that when the living entities that the living entity is sometimes described as sattva buddhi, that pure he's got pure intelligence when his intelligence acts directly mm. to perceive pains and pleasures. Read the next sentence and see what it says. There is a dreaming state in which understanding comes from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme okay. Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul, is the Supreme Controller, and under his direction, the living entities are sub-controllers. One must understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead with one's intelligence. So I guess that we're being pointed toward Madhvacharya's commentary if you want to learn more about this, but it's saying that the living entity is sometimes described as Sattva Bodhi when his intelligence acts directly to perceive our pleasures and pains, our ups and downs, above activities, which seems to be like above karma. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly in what context it's being said. And then, so he's saying, if you want to learn more about that, go check out um, Madhva's commentary on this verse. Okay. All right. Going forward, 26. 26. As one can understand the presence of the air, by aromas it carries, right? The aroma is different than the air. So under the guidance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can understand the living soul by these three divisions of intelligence. Okay. These three divisions, however, are not the soul. They are constituted of the three gunas, the three modes, uh, and are born of activities. Okay, born of activities means it's our previous activities, our karma, that gave us a combination of um, a, a certain recipe, right? A combination of of ingredients that created the experiences that we're going through, right? So they're all sort of illusions. Even your wakefulness is a type Makes of sense. illusion, yeah. right? So that's dominated by, say, goodness, dreaming, passion, deep sleep, ignorance. I'm 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 asking you. I'm not even. Oh, you. um, I wasn't even thinking in in those terms, but um, there there might be a pair, yeah, you know, like a, a kind of correlation because right, it says they're constituted of the three modes, and are born of activity. So that's why that's where I got that from. Um, sure, but the um, idea that is sense. that the aroma is in the air. It's not the air. It's it's being gathered. Uh, it's being, it's being carried by the air. And in the same way, we have this illusion in the awake world. I'm here in Connecticut, and it's a temporary reality. And then we have yeah. our dream, which is a real temporary reality. Well, and then yeah, we have. It, it, go ahead. Yeah. No, then well, we have. Just... <laughs> you totally zonked out and asleep, and that's another type of temporary reality. Yeah, it, it's it's again what we're working here to find is in an earlier verse, a few verses back. Remember, Prahlad, he was using this analogy just like a. An expert can find gold within iron ore, mm -hmm. right? Or, or just we could imagine someone panning for gold, right? It's like you stick that thing there in the in the, in the dirt in the stream or right in the creek, 
Yeah, and then panning you, for gold. And then you kind of like shake it up and you kind of start filtering the thing out and you're looking within there. Can I find something special, something that's unique, something that's different? And so what Prahlad is instructing his friends in is how do we find the soul, that spark of spirit within this body made of matter, right? And uh, he's, he's using an analogy to help us do that because just like we can't see the air, but because the air is, air is carrying different aromas, it indicates that the air exists. You mm. can infer, <laughs> right? Because one minute the air is carrying this aroma and the next moment the air is, air is carrying another aroma. You can't see the air, but you understand that there's air that's carrying these aromas. The aromas become evidence of the existence of the air which is necessary to carry them. And so similarly, we're not able to see the soul, but because we feel the soul passing first, oh, it's passing through this state of consciousness one moment, and then later on it's passing through another state of consciousness, oh, and then it's passing through a third state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Those states of consciousness do not ex they can only be perceived by a living soul. So the fact that they're being perceived means that the soul is there. It's just a type of inference. Um, you, you, again, the previous verse had said um, back in, in uh, text 23, 24, it was talking about sober expert persons searching for the soul with these purified minds and their analytical study. Um, trying to find the study uh, in terms of the soul's connection with dis distinction from connection with and distinction from all things that undergo creation, maintenance, and destruction. So in a sense, those states of awareness, I'm awake, and my wakefulness is, is kind of born when I wake up, it's maintained for some time, and then my, in a sense, my wakefulness is destroyed when I go into sleep. And then I go into a dream, the dream is born, the dream is maintained for some time, and then the dream is destroyed, I go into deep sleep. Right, my my state of deep sleep is born. It's maintained for some time, and then that state is destroyed. And now I'm awake again. There's but in those states of awareness don't exist in separation from the self, the conscious soul that's experiencing those states. So mm -hmm. the fact that those states are there means I'm the one that's experiencing them. It's helping me understand. It's a way of analyzing who I am. I'm that witness. This is um, in the in the purport. Yeah. Prabhupada says this. Uh, Even though one may artificially think himself liberated from material contamination, if he has not taken shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, his intelligence is polluted. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking how like uh, there's so many times you get to a place in your life where you think I am so above all of this. I'm so above all of this. And all of that becomes, in one sense, it's beautiful for now. And then at any moment, it can just switch back to, you can become exactly what you hated, if not worse than what you hated. But it's the, <laughs> yeah. t taking shelter of Krishna at every moment, that type of humility. It's not due to some uh, diet or health regime or something like that that makes the consciousness pure. Ultimately, it comes from surrendering to Krishna and all of the purity of the mind will naturally follow that. It, and, it's, it, yeah. Go ahead. It, well, I was going to say that in, in explaining that, he's, he's referring to a really important verse in the Bhagavatam from the 10th canto, Ye and Ye Ravindakshiva Muktamani Nas. It's mm -hmm. saying that this, this experience of um, feeling I'm liberated, feeling I am, I am the one divine light, it's a very profound feeling, but it's not a, actually a, a, an absolutely clear perception mm. because it, 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 it's a, ultimately it's a state where I'm thinking I, I've lost touch with the truth that I am an individual, mm. Mm. right? And so it's maintained only for some time. And then you come down from that state, which is a really interesting point because so much of the earlier texts, like in the Upanishads, seem to be pointing to that as the ultimate. Right. Bhagavatam is saying that's actually not the ultimate. The ultimate is divine love. Mm. You know? it's, it's so much higher than just being engrossed in material activities. But yeah, when you, the big zoom out is that even that liberation is coming from a gift of Krishna. 
who's yeah. the source of he, he is the lord of mukti the lord of liberation in the same way a child a teenager can feel like wow i'm driving i got my own car i'm free i can go anywhere i want you know but no you got your mom's credit card that's your m dad bought you the car your mom's paying for the insurance in that car you, it feels like you're free but you're actually completely dependent it's also a type of illusion that you're in yeah right and you know there's this part of the commentary here. Prabhupada says the soul is different from the body. Just as aromas are distinct from the material vehicle in which they are carried, namely the air, the soul is unattached to material activities. Like, in other words, all that I do with my body and all that I go through in my life, in one sense, my soul is just kind of being, it's just, it's just passing by my soul. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all just kind of going across my soul. And it just, we go through lifetime and lifetime of these experiences just passing over us. Like, like in the sky, the sky's there and different types of clouds and birds and so on are passing through it, but it always stays there. Mm. And so then he says, this analysis can be considered. Can, and I think when he says considered, I think it can be understood. It can be perceived by a person who's fully under the shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. He says, this is confirmed in the Vedic injunction, yasmin vigyate sarvam evam vigyatam bhavati. This is, I, I look this one up. This is um, from the, um, I believe it's from the Manduka Upanishad. Hmm. And it says, um, it's, it's, the, it's Shanaka. It says, Shanaka, a great householder, approached Angirasa and asked, dear sage, Knowing what does all become known, right? What is the, what what object of knowledge? When you understand that one object, you understand everything, mm. right? So, Prabhupada saying, if if we if we understand Krishna, if we understand that supreme being behind everything, we can understand. Oh, I get it. These different states that I go through are temporary. I'm the spark of eternal energy, which is a spark of Krishna's energy. And I have an eternal connection with that spark, like the rays of the sun have with the sun itself. So um, th this is where it's all going. It, it, the idea is, and in a commentary to that, um, I forget who said this, but I got it down in my notes here. Just as one knows all things made of clay by knowing a piece of clay, one can know all effects by knowing the special spiritual object in other words if we can understand krishna who becomes vishnu who um enters into the material realm and it's all a manifestation of his energy and through his power he transforms that energy in different ways that i am one transformation or one aspect of krishna's energy my my own awareness that i'm moving through a material realm that's another type of his, another transformation of his energy, right? If we understand that one being, we understand everything. It kind of, it, it just, it all opens up. Just like if I, I might look at like a clay pot, like say I didn't know anything about clay, right? What is this hard thing? How did it manifest? Where did it come from? How come it's shaped in a perfectly round shape that seems just suitable for cooking or carrying water or something. Oh, now here's something else made of clay. You know, it's a clay spoon. It's mm. a different thing. Where did this come from? And it, does it have a different source? Did it come from the same source? You know, if I really know what clay is, I begin to understand everything that's made of clay. Mm. And if I begin to understand Krishna, who everything is just a manifestation of his, of his energies, then I understand everything. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I like you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm a manifestation of Krishna's energy, and you are too. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. And we're the same. <laughs> and yet different. Yeah. All right, One more? Next verse. Yeah. Therefore, my dear friends, O sons of hold demons. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I think there's 27. Got to do. We skipped over 27. We skipped over 27? Well, yeah. Okay, sorry. Though polluted until... Through. Through polluted intelligence, one is subjected to the modes of nature, and thus one is conditioned by material existence. Yep. 
like a dreaming state in which one falsely suffers, right? Ever have a dream where you're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> One of my crazy maritime dreams I have. Ah, the boat is capsizing. Oh, God. How many times have I dreamt that dream? Mm -hmm. Like a dreaming state in which one falsely suffers. Material existence, which is due to ignorance, must be considered unwanted and temporary. Okay. We're, we're desperately trying to embrace material existence. We take photos of the past and we put them on our walls and remember, recount the good old days. But here, sharing like, this is material existence. It's it, it's ignorance. Why, why highlight it? It must be considered unwanted and, and temporary. And, 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 and and with if we can understand this with faith, right? It, it's 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 asking us to stretch our minds for sure, mm. right? It's asking us to. It's saying, in a sense, the way it speaks to me, or I think the way that it probably speaks to most of us, is like, "Hello, Kastu. Hello, Raghunath. You've been moving through life as if this is the one reality." Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to help you understand is that there's an even truer reality beyond the experience that we're going through right now. You could even say that what we're living through right now is kind of like a dream. Sure. You know? and, you're, and you can get glimpses of this in, in our modern world by looking at video games or virtual realities or different things. That you, can get, you can get glimpses of it just looking back at your life, looking okay. back at your last relationship and how it seemed so lasting and permanent and real. And now when you think about it, if you've ever been married before, had a girlfriend or boyfriend before, when you look back at it, it almost seems like a dream. Sometimes even your dreams seem more real than our past relationships. Yeah, And it seems that way because it is that way. It actually is dreamlike. That's we, right. remember, we remember grandparents that have passed, by, passed away we don't want to say that they're nothing or they're apparitions, but of of their form, that form is temporary. And in that in that sense, the dream is temporary also. Yeah. And therefore, to invest that much um, love, hate, uh, attachment to a dream is, is, is silly. It's like investing your love in the Titanic movie and crying when the ship goes down. <laughs> it's a movie. It, you know, their love, their love can't be joined eternally now. It's a movie. They're, they weren't even real people. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes children see something that traumatizes them in a, in a movie, say, right? Sure. Your parent parents has to like, say. What, like one oh, parent is saying, real. like, why did you let the kid watch that? You know, now they can't let it go. And, and, and so similarly, this verse is saying this, our existence in this world is something like a bad dream like a dreaming state in which one falsely suffers there's nothing really there's nothing ultimately real happening but we're suffering because of our identification with it well material existence which is due to ignorance must be considered unwanted and temporary just like a, a bad dream is unwanted and it's temporary if we if we can grasp this we can move through this world unchanged by the externals like with a steadiness and then tap into our real nature underneath mm -hmm which is actually steady and very blissful. You know, I'm, it's like we, we find our joy in lamentation for the past. Isn't it peculiar? The whole, as, a, as a musician and a person who puts out old CDs and records and stuff like that, I got to this point in my life where like, I'm going to stop even collecting my own records because it's sort of like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? I'm just going to store them yeah, so I can go back and look later. through them. It, like it, <laughs> it's like how many people have basements filled with, Oh, this is my, you know, 45 year old son's, um, you know, artwork from when he was five years old. And this is, I mean, it, it's nice for a moment. It's just, it's like, it's like remembering dreams almost. Hmm. Yeah. You, you, it, it almost becomes a little exhausting, it almost becomes a little futile. And it's, it's like, how many of these relics can I save? And what am I actually getting out of it anyway? Don't get me wrong. I like pictures on the wall of family and <laughs> things like that. And I'm not trying to be heartless here. 
But at the same time, I think when a devotee looks at pictures of their family on the wall, I see it a little bit differently. I, I do. There is a type of romance. Remember when it was like that? And we, by the way, we tend to forget the pain. We tend to remember, oh, it was rosy. But I, you also see how, oh, forms change. And you can look at those photographs with a spiritual vision. And um, you can actually sharpen your spiritual life by seeing the change of forms. Hmm. Well, we're gonna we're out of time. There's so much more we could say about that. We'll pick it up tomorrow, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You got a show to do. I got a performance. <laughs> Fine performance. And you're gonna bring very, your violin? very outstanding. Uh bring your violin to the show today, Ron. <laughs> Open up with a little something. Why couldn't it be more cantata? refined? Why couldn't I go out there and do some type of classical music or some <laughs> some ballet or something? Well, you Instead, do care, I'm going to be with a bunch of dirty, <laughs> dirty older men and young teenagers jumping around, sweating, tearing You're going to be shirts. into it once you get going, though. Yeah. Okay. Mara. Yeah, you guys ready for some takeaways? Take it away. Yeah, Mara. Mara, are you yeah. coming to any of these shows? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go to New York City. All right. That'd be good. Because Tuba's going to come, too. It's a little Wisdom of the Sages reunion. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a ton of like Wisdom of the Sages postcards. You really should have them at these shows, right? You should give them to me. Well, how am I going to do that? What are you doing? Like just decorating your apartment? Don't, with you, these postcards? don't you have a bunch of them over there, Mara? Didn't I give, give you like I a bunch of stacks away. of them? Yeah, I think we gave them away. I don't think we have any more, actually. You gave away all of those? How? Don't, don't, I, I, I meet people. I meet people. I'm a people person. I go to really ask to someone for? else. And, uh, what did you really <laughs> use them for? I go right through, on. I go through, I go, th I go, and when I'm on the plane, I just hand them out to people. You, <laughs> you. All right. Be friend. Let's be friends. <laughs> All right. Appreciate the people you're with. Okay. okay. All right. You can take that away. Being Love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. We're all trying to fill our God-shaped hole. Yeah, yeah. Fill your hole. <laughs> We're not just easy, okay? Bhagavatam gives us what we need. <laughs> That's right. Hare Krishna. Our spiritual, our spiritual and intelligence, our spiritual acumen and intelligence follows us. It does. Well, like that word, acumen? It's a good yeah. word. Keep it. You can keep that today. Whatever you shine in, you become an influencer. Hmm. Um, what's it called when you get the blue dot? The blue dot. No idea what you're talking about. Verified. When you, you get verified, you become an influencer. Yeah. Um, our karma we... gives us a recipe of experiences. Did Mary just shake her head at me like, oh, good. <laughs> Give me one of those head, head shakes. Oh, she, she's I different since she came back from difference. California. She's different now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. What, what, what Mara? What, what's our karma you? gives us a recipe of experiences? Yeah, it's mixes yeah, it up in different varieties, different mm. spices. Mm. Yeah. Our states of awareness indicate the existence of the soul. Yep. Changing okay. States. One states. knows. Yeah, one knows all when they know Krishna. That's true. No, Lord Chaitanya. No Radha and Krishna. No Lord Chaitanya. No Radha and Krishna. <laughs> you love that. <laughs> I do. I do like that one. Good one. We're desperately trying to embrace material existence. Mm. Oh, yeah. I am all the time. Desperately. See your old photos with spiritual vision. Just throw them out. Or throw them out. And mom, I got this photo of you. I'm just going to toss in the trash. Up. Don't take this personally, mom, but you're an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay to be a dented can. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. We're dented. We're a little bit dented. That's okay. I hope I see some, some of y'all this weekend at one of those shows. I posted all my dates of travel for the next few weeks in, back in California and on the East Coast. And if not, we hope to see you at the farm. So uh, check my Instagram for my dates of travel and for our Wisdom of the Sages retreats. Italy is coming up. And our Wisdom of the Sages retreat over Memorial Day weekend at Super Soul Farm if you can't make it out of the country, if your passport has been confiscated. And you can just come up to upstate New York and hang with us. Stuba's going to be there. Where am I going to be? Get, we should get Stuba cooking one of these days. He's a very good cook. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cook for one of those things. 
Yeah, well, you should have a, a pizza night. Pizza night for a lot of people is challenging. It's very challenging. What else? Nice. What do you do for quantity cooking, Kostuba? I can do anything. Makes a good halibut. Make, make a halibut yeah, for you. All right. That's good. Hey, you guys, it's time for you guys to go to Apple Podcasts if you haven't been there. Apple Podcasts, give us a five star review. It makes a difference. Everybody can do that. You have no excuse not to do that today. If you haven't done it, go to your Apple Podcast, find Wisdom of the Sages, scroll down to write a review, and do not just hit five stars. First, you got to write the review, then you hit five stars. Some of you might Why be you asking, well, Raganoff, some of you might be asking, Raganoff, well, we have to give a five star? And the answer is yes, you do. <laughs> you, you do have to give a five star. Sometimes you, you actually just gotta drag us stuff. down. If you don't yeah, give a five yeah, star. Yeah, if you don't give us five stars, you're hurting us. <laughs> Even four, it makes yeah. us look worse. Yeah, and I want to thank everybody who's out there giving a, a monthly stipend to Wisdom of Sages. Some people are giving $2, $4, $5, $108. Whatever you're giving, I want to say thank you. And I want to say, most of all, I want to say... Don't say it. Double don't it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> double it! <laughs> I think maybe that's maybe that's what you need to hear today. Sometimes we just need to hear something. Maybe today that something is double it. Who just told me they got two of the books? Got a message from oh, Eva. Eva said I got your book and then I doubled it. I got another one. Nice. Sometimes you just gotta ask. You wanna see what I'm dealing with today, you guys? It's a tiny little second. Oh, these are frisky one. Frisky. 